Ever since I first played Gauntlet Dark Legacy as a kid, I was hooked and beaten it several times throughout my life. Ever since my neighbor introduced me to the game, we've played it non-stop and almost beaten it. Even my little sister and I would play this game like crazy on the PlayStation 2. Now that I'm nearly 30, it's time to review the two best Gauntlet games. Today we'll start with Legends, the original game, as Dark Legacy was the remake that added so much more to it. For now though, this PlayStation 1 game needs attention badly. <laughs> The room remains my secret, puny fools. Your failure delights me. <laughs> bad touch, bad touch, stranger danger. To start, Gauntlet Legends was an arcade game just like Dark Legacy, with the ports varying in quality and features. For the PlayStation 1 version, it's considered the worst. The levels are smaller. Physics are buggy, and there's only two players allowed instead of four. Though the game does carry over the inventory system which was removed in the Dreamcast version, this allows you to store your items to be used when needed instead of right away. You can unlock two levels after beating the game, Desert Lands and Forest Realm. The other thing is you cannot start a separate character if you select the unlockable beast characters. It just changes your character's model. Overall, this is the second port. The first was the Nintendo 64 version, with Dreamcast coming after the PlayStation 1 version, which Dark Legacy would later build off of. The plot of the game is Garm is an evil wizard who tried to control a demon named Scorn who turned on him, killing him and causing chaos across the realms. Garm's brother, Sumner, calls upon the four heroes of each realm to aid him in his quest to stop Scorn and return the realms to peace. The heroes are Valkyrie, Wizard, Archer, and warrior with four hidden beast alternatives to stop scorn he must gather all the rune stones shards and defeat all of his minions in the form of bosses exploring various realms such as the mountain realm where you'll face orcs goblins scorpions lava monsters and of course a dragon boss castle realm is home to more orcs and goblins with rats and a chimera boss. The ice realm is home to arctic snow and ice levels with a yeti boss. And finally, the province slash town realm with zombies and a lich boss. With Scorn's realm being the final battle. Along the way, you can find secret doors to try and collect coins. If you manage to get them all within the time limit, you unlock a new variant to a character like Minotaur, Jackal, Tigris and Falconus. The game controls decently. If you've played Dark Legacy, you know what to expect, but there's a few differences. You cannot block nor strong attack. This means you cannot block the dragon boss's ground pound attack. So defeat the boss before you die or start over. Lame. So that sucks. But it's not a major problem. Just level up and get the legendary weapons to easily defeat every boss hidden throughout all the realms. Plus, you can store items in the 64 and PS1 versions, making the bosses not as challenging as they were in Dark Legacy for the PS2 due to the lack of an inventory system. You can access a shop when back at the tower to buy items and store them for later use. You can easily see all your stats thanks to the UI showing everything from gold to level and experience to items and more. This is a great addition that was removed in Dark Legacy. You have to complete a level or be in the tower to access the character menu to see your stats, like how much experience you have. The one drawback to the game 
is how it feels a bit clunky, as your character's attacks don't always land in the direction you want. And if there is a difference in height, you won't hit anything. I noticed this with golems, which are strong enemies that like to knock you down. Yet again, that didn't hinder my fun. The audio quality is PS1 as PS1 can be. Though the music is nice and there's a lot of variety, it doesn't loop properly. Instead, it ends and begins all over again. That's not how video game music is supposed to work in a video game midway. There are only a few issues I ran into, like slowdown and frame dips, as well as the classic PS1 graphical glitches that in turn let me see things I shouldn't. None of which caused problems, even on native hardware, Gauntlet Legends runs and plays just fine. With emulation, it runs even better, as to be expected. So let's get this video with, it's too long as is. Overall, the game hasn't aged that badly, mechanically, and graphically it's your stereotypical PS1 looking game, but you can still tell what you're looking at. It's just crude 90s console 3D visuals at its finest. I do recommend the game, and had fun replaying after not doing so for so many years. Did suck I couldn't get anyone to play with me as I always wanted to play with others. But Legends is a good game worth your time. An average good game. Later on, I'll cover Dark Legacy. But that game is larger and will take more time to get done. Till then, see you all next time.